Welcome to the Thanksgiving Day edition of A Closer Look. Mark Miller, Mark Shine, and Mark, this is why we're thankful this Thanksgiving. Right. Yes, we certainly are. We don't have a turkey, we don't even have a turducken, but we've got something that's more important than all of that, and that's our grandkids. Something to be proud of. Yep. I know we are. So, yep. well, let's get into the uh, playoff edition, but before we do that, we have an extra highlight. Yeah. A couple of sideline quarterback photographs, thanks to Brooke Sherrick. Now, Brooke is the a sister of Tim Goodwin mm -hmm. from Mary Local. You and I were at Sydney the other night, and she took a couple pictures, and we want to put those pictures up. Look at that form. Yeah, well, you know, we, we like to play catch on the sideline a little bit. We did it down at Anna, and uh, we weren't counting on somebody uh, recording us. But Now, you told me the follow-through is pretty good on that. Yeah, yeah, you got the duck bill out there. You're pronating, got that, that index finger pointing out there, so that's pretty good form. Well, that means I learned then, because when we were at Anna, you said I didn't pronate. No, you weren't pronating. You weren't finishing. It's like a free throw. Duck bill, you know? All right, there you go. A couple <laughs> old guys like to throw the football around still. Yeah. We hope you do on Thanksgiving this weekend as well. Well, we have a couple of teams who have lost in the playoffs last weekend. We thought we would recap their seasons before we get into previewing what's going to come up. And, Mark, you start with OG. Yeah, you lose at this point in the season. You've had a great one, and Ottawa Glendorf did. Finished 11-7, and seven, lost to Bishop Hartley by three points. Second year in a row that Hartley took him out of the tournament. WBL tri-champs, Jay Kaufman returns at quarterback, so no matter who else they bring back, that's a pretty good start. Ken Schreiner, what a great year they had. We want to move on then to Fort Recovery and their loss this week to fellow foe uh, Minster in the MAC. Fort Recovery finished at 8-5. and five. The defending state champions were also 4-4 four and four in MAC play in the game that they lost 35-33. A two-point conversion pass batted down that would have put him into overtime with just a couple of seconds left in the football game. Will Holman rests for 131 and three scores. He and Andrew Stockler, they are both first-team MAC and first-team district, and they're both juniors coming back. Throw in Chris Link. He was the center. He was also first-team all-district and first-team all-MAC. Good season this year for the Fort Recovery Indians. St. Mary's Rough Riders also exited the tournament, finished 11-2, and, and they were also tri-champs in the WBL. <laughs> They lost to Trotwood Madison by one touchdown, 34-27. And some people have said Trotwood Madison can compete at any division yep. in this tournament. Very, very talented team. Eric Spicer and Julius Fisher both went over 100 yards again. We've said that several times this yep. year. Doug Fry, congratulations on a great year. And we'll go on then to Crestview and their loss to Macomb. This was a double overtime game, went 35-28. Crestview beat Calvert in the first game of the playoffs, then Arlington. Uh, in this particular game, their sophomore quarterback, Drew Klein, another good football game for him. 16 carries for 76 yards, threw for 138. Luke Garadot, however, rushed for 114. This came down to double overtime. Malachi Abbott scores. That puts McComb up seven. Klein throws an interception in the end zone, and that would have tied the football game and sent it on to, to round three. Instead, McComb's going to go on. Emilio Delone, offensive lineman. Drew Klein, first-team quarterback, Nick Henry, Braden Van Cleve, Dylan Grandstaff, Alex Ingram, and, of course, the sophomore Drew Klein was player of the year offensively in the, in the uh, NWC. Good year for Crestview. And, Mark, we now want to move on to our play of the week. You've actually got a couple got a good couple. ones from tournament. Well, let's take a look, first of all, at Coldwater and Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, the game that you and I did. Take a look at number 16, Neil, Neil Muhlenkamp. He's going to be the in the wing back there, a little counter play, cuts up inside. We'll show it to you again, but look at the spin moves and off he goes to the races. Look at his buddy still blocking, getting him into the end zone. This was huge because it was 28-21. Cincinnati Hills was making a move and this uh, started to put a little separation between them and the Cavs. Right there you can see two guys on him. He's spinning, spinning, spinning. Once he gets a crease, he is gone. Neil Muhlenkamp had a great game, played on defense. Uh, made a hit that you'll probably see later in the show that uh, made a statement defensively for the Cavaliers. All right, next, let's go to the onside kick. And I didn't mention it in Ottawa Glandorf's uh, capsule there a minute ago because this was a huge play. This was right at the end of the game. You can see down there, counting down from 25 seconds, they're down by three. And remember, OG's got Tristan Ball. He's a really good field goal kicker. They thought they had this one recovered. As a matter of fact, you're going to see one of the officials up top signal that it is their ball. But the official right on the 50, watch the red or blue bean bag come out. It landed right there on the 46 and a half yard line. That's where it touched an OG player. That means it is dead, and the ball goes over to the receiving team, 
and that's what they eventually called a heartbreaker for yeah. OG because visually from the stands, and even when we watched it right. a couple of times, we thought, ooh, it, OG got the ball. Right. Uh, wasn't quite that way. We watched it multiple times. We got gear, gear up there, freeze, froze the frames for us so we could actually look at it step by step by step, and there was some contact. Hit a guy in the back of the leg. It was a good call by the official and a gutsy call by the official. It was. Unfortunately for OG, it went against him, but uh, it was certainly a well-played football yeah. game and a, and a great game to see. Yep, sure so, was. All right. Well, what we thought we would do this week is we would look at our bright spot. We've had multiple players from our area who have competed in high school football, go on to the collegiate level and have really fine years. So this is not maybe the, the best list of, of all. Did I skip one, Mark? We're going to go to Zane oh, Solomon. Oh, I forgot about forgot Zane. My guy. fault, Mark. I skipped right. one on my, my notes here. Um, you walk us through this because this is an Elida first grader. You know a little bit about this one. Well, he is a first grader at Elida, and he did a, a project in, in school, and I think it was his uh, grandma that sent it yeah. in. Ben Roethlisberger has a website. I went on it. It's really good. Uh, he doesn't do any social media, but he has this website, and he picks a little fan of the week, and Zane Solomon from Elida. Now, there is a connection because, um, you know, Ben's dad, Ken, went to school at Elida, and Ben was born in Lima, Elida, and so he got a little Elida guy that dressed up his turkey like Ben Roethlisberger, and look at that smile on Zane's face. That's a pretty <laughs> cool thing. So that is Ben's little fan of the week right there. Should we say something about Ben made the Browns look like turkeys this yeah. week and kind of rub it in a little bit? Yeah, yeah we should. that's right. And, and we got another break. Oh, we do. Are you going yeah. to talk about well, the concessions here? You do it because you're the concession stand well, guy. Yeah, but you, you went down I and saw it. I went down and saw it. All right, Northmont. We're down at Northmont High School, and Mark goes to the concession stand because <laughs> we always like to see what the fair is there, you know. And he came back and said they got Thunder Dogs. Now, Thunder that's dog. because yeah. Northmont High School is called the Thunder Bolt. Right. So they named their dog the Thunder Dog. Here's what it is. All beef hot dog. Right. Pulled pork, melted cheese, the sound you're hearing is our heart there you go. Slamming, yeah. you know, yep. flapping shut, right. and jalapenos. Those right. are optional. That's a pretty good uh, looking sandwich right there. And they had marching tacos. Correct. Because, I've never heard of marching tacos. Well, because the band parents do the concession stand mm -hmm. instead of walking tacos, they are marching I tacos. Like so there we pretty go. Cool. And unfortunately for Macomb, your football team is in the state semifinals, but you have been bypassed by my favorite <laughs> hot chocolate at a high school football game. Yeah. That was up in the press box, thanks to Dave Ross. Yeah, yeah that Sydney. was really yeah, good. That was really good. That was yeah. a Sydney, so Very we're good creamy. there. Now let's go into okay. what I started to get to a moment ago, and thanks for getting me back on track. Uh, we want to look at kind of our where are they now type situation, and we have gone through, you did, did a lot of research on this, and uh, spent a lot of time trying to figure out who's playing college football where, and we hope we didn't miss anybody, but we really tried to catch them all, and we kind of want to go through the list and kind of scroll through each individual page. Well, we These, found, yeah, we found a bunch of them, but right. we probably missed some, and sorry, sorry for that, but we'll start with Ashland. Ashland's got four guys from Kenton. There's that connection, you know, that yep. they've had for a long time. 155 guys on the Ashland roster. That's a bunch of fellas, and... Uh, you know, we scroll on down or hit the next page and Bluffton pops up. They had the most local players, right. 19 local guys on the roster up at Bluffton, and they had a great year. Well, one of those players is Micah Roberson, who had a great career and a great season. Set the school record, 351 catches, uh, 100 catches in a season. That's a school record. Most yards in a season, uh, 1,096. That's a school record as well. Congratulations, Micah. Ohio Northern, we'll look at Zach Schmerge from Wapak. There's uh, three other guys on the roster from Wapak down there, too. But Zach was an All-American last year as a sophomore. He finished this year his junior year with 20 tackles against Baldwin-Wallace. Logan Ray's on that list. He majors in marketing. He's a tight end, 30 catches, 307 yards, five scores, and he got to play for your son. That was pretty, yes, pretty did. big yep. thrill for him as well. Uh, also on this list is Christian Williams. Now, Christian's the running back from uh, Anna. And uh, he uh, set a, a, a record with 1,208 yards rushing, 12 touchdowns for a freshman back, had a great year at ONU. He sure did. We're going to scroll ahead now. You can see some of the other schools, and we're going to come up on, uh, I think, uh, Bowling Green and the MAC right there. Joe Davidson from Findlay. He's the punter, but he's a special punter. He was an academic All-American last year. This year he's one of the 10 finalists for the Ray Guy Punter of the Year Award, averaging just a smidge under 46 yards of punt. He is the real deal. And, and then uh, at Kent, we saw up there Bryce Fackler. He's a starting tight end out of Kenton. He has 13 catches and two touchdowns going for him this year. Uh, another uh, Ohio University guy in the MAC is Quentin Poling from Elida. Quentin is a uh, second leading tackler on that team. 
He's the captain, been player of the week a couple of times in the league this year. Okay, we can see here some other Mac schools, Ball State and Toledo. You can look at their names as well. And now to the Big Ten, Michigan State, uh, Tyler O'Connor. Tyler uh, will graduate, fifth-year player, have a master's degree in marketing research. He's 137 of 229 for 1,852 yards, 16 touchdowns for Tyler O'Connor at Michigan State. We'll see some other schools here, and, and you might recognize some local names. Uh, we're going to move on down and see Mount Union at the bottom. There's two Elida kids on that roster. There is an Elida connection. My son uh, tries to encourage as many local guys to go to Mount Union, and those two guys are. Um, Trine is, uh, I think we missed uh, Dayton, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did. We Dayton. wanted to talk about Chris Beesler from Dayton. Uh, Chris is uh, not just a great football player with 88 tackles and three sacks this year, but he's also what's called a, a nominee for the Academic Heisman. That means he'll be in New York City December 6th, where he'll receive an $18,000 post-grad scholarship and a chance to win a $25,000 scholarship. Wow, that's special. Yes, it is. Tristan Edwards from Elida started at center this year for the Trine Thunder as just a freshman. And the rest of the schools, you got the yep. last one. There we go. Andrew Garland up there from Bath. Of course, his dad is the football coach at Bath High School. Started three, 33 consecutive games, did the 6'2", 271-pound senior, and was honorable mention, all Mountain East Conference this year. So we want to congratulate all those young men who have competed in, uh, in college football in our area, and we kind of appreciate all that you've done. If we miss somebody, we apologize. And again, we did the best we could. Mark, you did a lot of research on that. We're really grateful for that. Okay, well, this week, of course, we're in the state semifinals, so let's move on and let's preview a couple football games, and you've got somebody out of the MAC to get it started. All right, Division 5, it's Coldwater at 12-1. and one. They were going to play Coshocton. They are also 12-1. and one. They're going to play at Olatangi High School on the north side of Columbus, and it might get a little bit of traffic jam down there as the Michigan-Ohio <laughs> yeah. State game's letting out, and these folks are coming in. People want to know where Coshocton is. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's by Newcomerstown. <laughs> Newcomerstown is the, the birthplace of Cy Young. Yeah, That's pretty important. Right. Yeah. But uh, it really is kind of out in the middle, kind of south of Sugar Creek, southwest uh, of New Philly, north of, of Zanesville, out in the middle of nothing. But they have beat two undefeated teams to get there. Neil Mil Mullenkamp in that last game when they beat CHCA had 105 yards on just six carries. Uh, ankle injury to a real important player, tight end defensive end Patrick Klosterman. This is the 14th final four and eighth in a row for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Good luck. Also, Mark, let's move on because you've got the Marion Local oh, yeah. Flyers also okay. to, Thank, to yeah. look at here on the bracket the, sheet. Division six, Marion Local with their win over Mechanicsburg, which a lot of people thought maybe was the, the state final, the state championship. They won that one 26 to 15. So they're 12 and one. They're going to play Patrick Henry from just north of here. They're 13 and oh, they're going to play it right here in Lima. That'll be pretty cool. Patrick Henry beat Ayersville 21-19, as Mark alluded to earlier. Patrick Henry has a great running back. Donnie Johnson ran for 211 yards and three touchdowns against Ayersville, but Marion Local's got some great players, too, and Dwayne Ligers had a 263-yard total offensive game in that last game, and this is their 15th Final Four. Amazing. Coach Goodwin and team. Well, let's move on then to a Dis Division 7 matchup that we'll have a chance to see here on WOSNWTLW, and that is Minster and Macomb. Minster, of course, out of the MAC, and we know that they are 9-4. and four. They were just, uh, what, 4-4 four and four in conference mm -hmm. play, but certainly they really came on at one point. I think they were like 2-4 and four at one point. Here's the uh, Macomb matchup. First of all, let's talk about Macomb, first of all. They, of course, out of the BVC. They are just loaded with all BVC players. So let's skip down to the all-district players. Mike Cherry, 6'5", 296, first-team all-district, both offensively and defensively. Malachi Abbott, the quarterback. Jace Krause, the uh, line, line, linebacker. And then Cam Morris, the defensive back. All kinds of offense, a great year defensively. This is a really good Macomb team. Minster, on the other hand, you know, kind of come out of nowhere a little bit. They've got some all-MAC players, too. They've got great state experience. They won a championship in 2014. This game is at Wapak and should be a dandy, dandy football yeah, game. Should be. Okay, let's put our broadcast schedule up on it. And, of course, the games are shrinking in our area. And uh, we're down to kind of what we're going to see. We're going to have uh, the Marion Local Patrick Henry game. That game will be Friday night, but we'll replay on Saturday morning. And then the Mr. McComb game will air Saturday night at 11.30 on WLTLW and WOSN. Well, this has been the Thanksgiving edition of A Closer Look. Mark, I want to wish you and your family a Thanksgiving. Thank it's family, it's faith, and it's football on Thursday. Enjoy the day, and we hope that you have time to do that as well and be thankful for all that you have. For Mark, this is Mark Shine saying thank you for watching A Closer Look on WTLW.